Hi, my name is Estelle from Cape Town, South Africa. A friend and I recently spoke about the many calamities so often cross our individual paths in life. She was in a very vulnerable place and had many questions. We were contemplating the mystery of God's gift of free will to man, the freedom to choose. With tears in her eyes, she asked me, Where does the freedom to choose come in when my husband leaves me for another woman? When I have a miscarriage, or when I hear I have stage 4 cancer and there is nothing more they can do for me? Where is free choice then? I would never choose these things to happen to me. Why do bad things keep on happening in my life? I was silent because I didn't have an answer. Inwardly, I earnestly started to pray and ask, Father, what is your answer? What is in your heart for this dear daughter of yours? I became aware of the loving kindness of the Father towards this dear friend of mine. Thoughts started to flow from my mind and I just started speaking. It is true that life is not fair and that things will happen that you have no control over. But that is not what is meant by free will or freedom of choice. Free will and freedom of choice is displayed by you and me in how we respond when a loved one passes away. When we have freedom of choice, what we will do with pain, what we will do when we experience sorrow, or in the case of a miscarriage, amidst an unfair dismissal at work, or perhaps the scrutiny of others. We can never escape all the calamities of life, but we can every time choose how to respond to them. We have freedom to choose what we will do each time, and those choices will propel us forward in life, whether they were good or bad choices. Many choose to turn away from God, blaming the circumstances on God. I'm not saying it's easy, but there is an option to always choose in the opposite spirit, opposite from what the world will choose or will do or will say. Self-defense and retaliation are the most eminent choices this world poses to us. But we, as his beloved, can like Mary of Bethany, lay ourselves at his feet, over and over again, until the pain subside, until the light begins to shine again. The breakthrough often doesn't come after one such surrender, especially when a loved one passes. It takes bringing those pains and hurts, the loneliness and feelings of rejection to his feet, to sit there over and over again, for as long as necessary every time, until the pain subside. And then, as we do this over and over again, healing begins to flow and peace grows again in the inner man. It is these choices of surrender that becomes a testimony, that becomes a hope for others who watch us in our times of trial. It forms in them an image of God and of what trust and surrender really means. Job writes in chapter 13 verse 15, Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And David says in Psalm 56 verse 3, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. These were the choices of men of old. Job was a righteous man, and David a man after God's own heart. They were not perfect, but their choices greatly favored them with God for eventual breakthrough and victory. May the Lord strengthen you and me with His might in the inner man, might to choose trust and surrender every time life throws a curveball at us. Father, I bring my vulnerable heart before your throne of grace. I ask for mercy. I ask for strength to choose life in every circumstance, to choose to love rather than retaliate, to trust you rather than falling into unbelief, In my weakness, I ask, help me in my unbelief. I choose to surrender and trust in you over and over again. In Jesus' name, Amen. May the Lord bless you until we speak again.